I love how that countdown started way before I was ready, but what's up everybody and welcome to Sweet the Podcast. It's your boy, your host, Will the Third, and this is episode what, 35, damn, You're pushing through these motherfuckers hard and fast. That's no pun intended. And that's not what he said. But for this episode, we got a special, special, talented ass guest. And I'm not even going to prolong this shit. He's a writer, director, filmmaker. If I'm leaving out things, you can tell us what, what all the other T you got. So none other than Philip Johnson. What's up, you <laughs> How y'all doing, Sweet the Podcast? Uh, we doing good. I'm glad to have you up on this bitch. How you doing though? I'm doing well. I watched Black is King last night, so I had a very black ass night. I feel connected to my roots. Can so can you, can we please not talk about Black is King? Because I have yet to see that. <laughs> well, I can't spoil nothing unless I screenshot a look for you. So well, don't don't worry. I've been looking at all the shit on Twitter and watching all the right. videos that they post. So it's unavoidable. <laughs> And if I would be gagging on this shit because damn, I, I can't wait to watch it after this, but I was prepping for this, so I couldn't watch this shit. Dang. Oh, you gotta watch it after it's good. I will. And and wait, I got one question about Black is King. Totally off topic. Is Michelle in that shit? I did not see Michelle. I was asking my friends, I'm like, yo, where was Michelle at? But no, she wasn't. Maybe because she couldn't have just put Michelle in the back a little bit. I, I, Solange? I don't think I saw Solange either. Oh, Solange they, wasn't in there? I think they was busy. <laughs> it Didn't it take like a year to make that shit? They did, because I saw one of my followers posted that he was one of the dancers in one of the scenes. He was like, I've been holding on to this for a whole year. So, yeah, I think they shot it last, like, summer. Damn. Well... Thank God for all of that and everybody who was involved for Black is King. Y'all check that out because I'm going to be checking it out soon. But this is not about Beyonce. This right. is about <laughs> <laughs> Philip Johnson from Philly Film and everything else that you do. Uh, Philly Speaks, the podcast, but we'll get into all that first since you're repping Michigan hard in the bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where you tell us about where you from and like just your upbringing and how you became into being a creative like what was your first project okay so i'm philip johnson i'm 25 i'm from detroit michigan i went to university of michigan for college and studied business and the way i grew up well number one detroit is black as fuck so of course grew up in black ass neighborhoods, black communities. So that just, Detroit was a good vibe in that way. And I grew up as an athlete actually, like real, really not a creative. I was focused primarily on track, football and school. And that was how I grew up majority of the time. There were times during childhood where I had started in like plays in elementary school when we had to audition and it just had worked out that I started, but I didn't really take creativity seriously because it was like there when you're doing all the sports after school and everything it's like you don't really feel like you have too much time to be doing that stuff so I quit I then was running track at University of Michigan and freshman year though midway through I ended up quitting like I was just inspired to move on after so many years and so I actually got kind of interested in the creative world through these runway fashion organizations on Michigan's campus. So modeling in those and then being the finance chair for one of them really had me creatively inspired and intrigued. So then when I graduated, I was like, oh shit, well, yeah, I have this business degree, but what am I going to do to keep that creative but kind of flowing? Because I had realized that I really liked that. So I was like, I feel like I need to build a career based off this since I enjoy it so much that, you know, I'm wondering what to do next. And I was kind of upset. So then I moved to New York City after graduation in 2017. And I got a job working as a financial analyst for Ralph Lauren because I wanted to do finance in a creative space. But at that same time, I started my first blog. And then the next year in 2018, I got on YouTube. And that's when I started my uh, web series, Black Sex in the City. And that really was my first big project that helped me to launch my creative career and like start building 
an audience and start, you know, having people want to collaborate. And then I moved out here in L.A. to L.A. in 2019 at the beginning of the year. And now thing we'll probably talk about, you know, some of the things that have happened since then. But, yeah, so that's kind of how things got started. Damn. Okay, so. That's odd. Most creatives don't start in another field as heavy as like you were in track football sports and then. And you're like, oh, I, I, I'm not feeling this too much. And then you took a dab of it. And then you made sure you centered your career around the creativity, what you already got, a, went to school, got a degree for. And that's not an easy ass little feat. You said it like it was nothing, but you must have done really well in school or done. Oh, pretty good. Yeah. yeah okay. I did. I did it, yeah. <laughs> Cause I got, I went to, I got my degree, in, my bachelor's of business administration from Michigan. And so that I think has kind of been what's been able to help me build my creative career and not just make art, but also have a business side to it that is able to make a career of longevity. That's been my focus for these years. So when are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a, 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 a how-to for the black LGBTQIA plus MLMNOP community and the straights or whoever else need this shit because that, that's a thing. That could be cool. I mean, I'm definitely, that's something that I'm interested in doing. I haven't decided exactly what it would be, but yeah, no, there was a point actually um, a couple of years ago where I was starting to try to write a book, but then I just kind of lost inspiration somewhat because it was going to take so much time and I was putting so much effort into the projects. So I was like, let me just continue to get all these things going and then focus on that. So that is something I'm still considering doing, though, or I want to do in the future. You should. And I don't even need no proceeds and then for sparking that interest back. <laughs> <laughs> but you did your first project on YouTube and that was the thing that was like, OK, I'm feeling this. Yeah. And where is that where uh, Filet Films popped off or how did that be off? Yeah, so the name Filet actually came from sophomore year of high school because before I was out the closet, I had, you know, some girlfriends. So my girlfriend at the time, I wasn't able to go to this after school club. It was African Americans Changing Tomorrow. I wasn't able to go that day because there was um, like track practice or something. So on the back of our shirts, we were getting name nicknames and she chose Filet. And I had never heard that before, but I liked it. So I stuck with it since then. And then so that became my at name and stuff on social media way back then in high school. But then, yeah, it was actually Filet's world was what I was calling um, the things I was doing, like my YouTube channel and my uh, original blog before Black Sex in the City started. But then midway through that web series on my 23rd birthday, two years ago in 2018, I decided to uh, incorporate as a business. So Filet Films Incorporated. And that was when I dropped the extra E from Philae. And that was where Philae Films was born from. Because that's where I was like, okay, you know what? My goal is, I just knew my long-term goal business-wise. And I was like, I have to take myself seriously enough to, you know, start this as a full business. And so that is where Philae Films was then born from two years ago. Wow. So she's still... She's uh, in her terrible twos. She's running a mug across LA. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And was Flip Flop TV the first show, the TV show that you have coming? Was that the first mainstream, like huge, huge project? Or was there anything yeah. else? Yep, it went straight from Black Sex in the City to Flip Flop because I, at the end of Black Sex in the City, I was just a little bit frustrated because I was happy with where things had gotten to, but it was like, okay, you know, I'm learning and I've gotten to learn and release some things, but I had some broader creative vision. So that's why I ended that show to move here to LA so that I could do a bigger show and be able to just have kind of some of the creative elements that I felt I wasn't able to get in New York City because, you know, it was cold a lot of the years. So we couldn't even really shoot outside, you know, for a lot of the time. And so I felt creatively limited in New York because of the 
settings where you can shoot because of course it's loud everywhere too so it was like okay mm. how are we going to get anything done that's not you know in an apartment or certain things because it's just hard to book locations there so yep flip-flop is the first big project so i'm excited how did you like living in new york and you said it was cold but ain't detroit detroit cold as fuck too that's true. Detroit is very cold. With New York, I mm, I liked it the first months because I moved there in the summer. Like after okay. I graduated, it was the summertime I visited, and I had also just gotten out of a relationship. So, and I had come out in that relationship in college. So when I did first move to New York, it was my first time like having gay friends and just uh -huh. experiencing gay social circles. So you know, of course just by being there for like a week over fourth of july week during the summer i was like all right i'm moving i'm having a good time it's great but by the time that like november or december like the winter got there oh, yeah. it got like, to get there yeah i was like oh <laughs> so by then immediately i was ready to move and i was very frustrated with being there so i started to plan the move then and then a year later was when i ended up moving here so i i definitely did struggle with not liking because i love nature and yeah, just, yeah. you see don't you see this forest behind me yes <laughs> <laughs> it's like that shit is important i feel like it really really matters for quality of life and just it does happiness mm -hmm. and well-being yeah. so I didn't like that about New York, but I did like that. You know, it it was a thing that I had always wanted to experience temporarily. Like the whole time I was growing up, I guess just because of movies and stuff, in my head, I was always like, I want to live in New York City for two years in my 20s. And then I actually ended up doing that. Well, it was only one and a half, but I literally ended up doing exactly what in my head I had envisioned. So I don't regret it for sure, but I wouldn't want to move back. <laughs> You hear that, New York? Y'all can keep it. <laughs> Y'all can keep it. I hope you're having a great time. You know, it is a great place for, you know, many people. I I had my fun and I was, you know, I, I was ready to be on to the place I really, really wanted to be. <laughs> and that is L.A. Mm. And that's where Flip Flop TV got its start. And I'm going to play a whole ass clip of this a promo teaser of this and i want to play the whole thing because i was gonna chop it but it's just too good to chop because you need <laughs> the whole piece well i'm See, glad this, you like it <laughs> I, I i really was laughing and i don't i mean i'm just gonna play this shit and stop talking oh, yeah. so here y'all go this is my third What's your name again? I'm Philip. Hey. They call me Flip. Hey. Baby girl. Hey. I'm a triplet. Hey. My name Elliot. Hey. I'm super lit. Hey. Big boy bounce that ass up and down on the tip and it's split. Grab your trainer bra, Philip. I mean, technically, you need a sports bra to run track. Hey, the only person I want to see in a sports bra is Adley. I'm dehydrated. Where's dehydrated? Ooh. You ladies need to stop assuming position and create your own. <gasps> Olympic gold medals and sponsors don't grow off your trees, so get off your oh damn head. Wow. It's like Coach doesn't even care about I'm injured. No, don't say that. No, none of us care. Not just him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Want you a crip? Alright. Shy girls have the best bodies. <laughs> 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 
Oh shit! The booty done killed him. Hey, you good, bro? What's up? Yo, wake up, dog. Ah, you good, little nigga. All right, I'll see you later, dog. Eat a nigga ass or something. Ass or Eat a nigga ass or something. Ass or something. Ass or something. Eat a nigga ass or something. Ass or something. Ass or something. Eat a nigga ass or something. I'm looking. I, I gotta pee. I already did. <sighs> oh. <sighs> 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait! <laughs> it's so much to unpack in that shit. Yo, <laughs> what what inspired that first, and then I'll go to. Inspired what? Which part? The whole thing? Yes, because I I've read. Let me go to my notes, and this is a perfect example. Okay, this is what you said in another interview because you know I do my research about this. Ooh. You said the world does not have enough fresh intersectional TV content. Johnson said, "Flip flop, dynamic, dynamically." Combine sports, LGBTQ conversations, comedy, futuristic technology, and black culture to create an undeniably entertaining experience on screen. And that's exactly what the fuck that is. <laughs> well, I'm happy you like it. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's giving me sci-fi, black, gay comedy, and just not really giving a shit. Because uh, uh, like right here. It's rated S for silly. Let me move this down here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that right there? I mean, and what's a lot to unpack is, you know what made me holler out loud is when that bitch said, when you said I had to go, I got to go pee. And that fool said, I already did. <laughs> <laughs> the funny, it was funny because that wasn't actually even in the script. Like, I remember the day of it just something happened where there will just be times on set where that's part of why I like doing comedy, because we'll just see something like I think I had seen that puddle and we were like, you know what, let's just play on that and let that be kind of how he leaves off and give that character that line. So I'm glad you like that because it was that was a spontaneous <laughs> choice in the moment. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, stupid, random shit like that that. Really didn't have no explanation. Like, nigga, what you pee for? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> he was exhausted. And actually, where that was kind of inspired from was that when I used to run track, I mean, practice would be so hard that there would be times that, I mean, you're exerting your body so much that yeah, I'm sitting there, like, have I at this point peed myself? Because right. it would. <laughs> I mean, when I tell you, it would be brutal out there in the 95 degrees. So that was the kind of funny part of that, that I feel like it was drastic in the fact that he had actually peed that was there. But <laughs> that's it was kind of playing on the fact that he was exhausted and that workout had killed him. <laughs> and he was like, I ain't getting up. Fuck it. I already did. No, uh, already done. <laughs> <laughs> so that track experience where you was – fantasizing because you know when i was in personal fitness that's the only pe i had to take they wanted me to run track i said no football no because i was in drumline and i i needed to be in band and and shit like that and chorus and i was that artsy motherfucker i see i see so and but when i had to take personal fitness and i was in there with all those niggas and hispanic and all even the white folks all them boys and we all getting naked in this bitch i was like my closeted ass was like 
It was a lot. It really used to be a lot. Like it was overwhelming, actually. It is. It, it is overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Like it's yeah. The I didn't of- I didn't shower in at PE because oh. I'm glad I had that shit at six period because I was not gonna get a shot. My dick would have been a bleep, bleep. And that's why honestly, when I was running at Michigan, like there especially was just a culture of just you know the way that the showers were set up, like it was a completely open shower situation. I never took not one shower. I couldn't do it. I can't and do it. That probably contributed to me wanting to quit because it was just like this, this is, is becoming more and more the older we're getting. Like it was, it was really a lot. And so it's funny because flip flop, one of the inspirations of it is like kind of a reimagination of what the experience would have been like if I would have come out while in the sports world. Because I when I I didn't come out until it was at least I think it was two years after I quit or something like that. Yeah, I was about 20 and I was 18 when I quit running. So, yeah, I yeah, it definitely would have been interesting because growing up as a little adolescent, you know, having to be at sports and, you know, but it's already known for being kind of homophobic. So you got to keep it under control. But also, you know, track, there's just a lot of spandex involved. It was you know, it was a stressful situation. You know, you just end up learning. I would ain't no way. Ain't it no was, way. It was all about tucking. It was I all heard about. Aretha say, Ain't no way. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from a young age the importance of tucking. So yes, yeah. I I I, I would have had a duct tape. I would have had because it would have just broke through tuck tape. <laughs> I, I don't I'm, i commend y'all who have to go through that at a young age i mean i went through pe and that was hard enough for me but when i joined the quick store when i joined the navy i was 19 and you showering with niggas all the time but i think they give us msg or something in our food because our dicks would not get hard oh they would just strip y'all out that much they just they really fucked with our minds. Wow. <laughs> our dicks went go. But the last month we was in boot camp, oh, they was fucking in the bathroom. They was fucking on watch. They was Ooh. but you didn't allegedly. I don't I ain't speaking on that. <laughs> or so I've heard. <laughs> so I've heard. It wasn't I, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> I was doing my duty. Mm. Which so, could be the question, so. <laughs> and not that duty. <laughs> so you got flip flop TV, which I love it. I'm not even gonna say I've had. I ain't gonna say that, but I do really, really fucking love it. I, it is funny to make me laugh and want to play that long of a clip. You got some good on your hands. That's why I'm down to promote that shit and help spread that. I appreciate it. Now you do podcasting too, which I checked out as well. And how do you like doing that? Because shit, this shit be stressing me out enough. And you run a TV show, and, and his podcast is called Fillet Speaks. Apple, Google, Spotify, y'all check it out. Yes, I, yeah, I enjoy doing the podcast, and then my mom actually inspired me to do it because she was just like, I feel like you have some like. She just felt like it would be a good another way to like speak to the audience and share some of just my insights and another way to communicate and kind of translate my mind for people and be able to hopefully spread some positivity and stuff like that. So I've enjoyed it. I've brought people on it who, you know, I are near and dear to my heart and also just the topics that we've covered. I've kind of just followed whatever I'm feeling passionate about that week and i'm like okay let me just find the right person that i want to do it with and yeah so it's been it's been good it's been a nice project for quarantine it's been a real good time we see each other yes because that's what i do if i'm i have some topics that i think about beforehand but i'm like it's not right right now i don't have enough information to speak because if i go by motion it will be crazy right (laughs) so Fucking yes. Now, one more thing back about the flip flop TV. These triplets. Yeah. Who would all who are y'all and like the young folks say, choo choo, choo to choo choo choo. 
Oh, <laughs> so the triplets, that concept actually was inspired by in uh, college. I had this friend group called the triplets. And the funny thing is they were part of the reason that I think I ended up quitting the track team because they weren't in the sports world. And it was like, OK, I found a real strong group of you know, black men, it wasn't just them, but there were also some others. But within the group, we were the triplets. And it was like I had just found a real strong group of friends and everything. So uh, we just had a very, very good time. But what I will say is that we didn't have that experience as the show, because when I came out, you know, I'm the only one who was actually gay. So but I put that in there just because it was just I wanted to be able to tell the story of coming out through a friend group in a way, because, right. you know, with a lot of um, gay people's introduction to the gay world, you know, a lot of the times that person, that one gay or, you know, those few gay people who kind of, you know, bring you in, it can be a little complicated at first. And so that was the case with one of the triplets in the show. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, lines can be really blurry going like when you're Ooh, first, that's a whole go keep going go go oh yeah yeah so that's why i just kind of mixed in that inspiration from past life and um like in terms of the friend group but also then later in life kind of what i told you about new york how then i had my first gay friends and it was yeah so i kind of brought some inspiration some of the messy inspiration from that in through the friend group and see i wasn't gonna say shit about that i was gonna leave it alone because I can say your first gay experience of the gay scene was in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That was because when I came out with a boyfriend in college, it was like I didn't have any other gay friends on campus. He didn't really. So it more so was like I was starting to be openly gay, but I wasn't yeah. actually in like I didn't even know there was a black gay Twitter at the time because I wasn't on twitter for a couple of those years of college and so yep new york was my first time and you know it was it was a lot there was a lot going on when <laughs> there was a lot going on for sure so, <laughs> so i brought some of that inspiration right on me <laughs> shout out new york <laughs> Shout out to New York City, Brooklyn. That's where I was staying. Shout out to Brooklyn. I Brooklyn, I Brooklyn must got the niggas. Brooklyn, Brooklyn they, is where it's at. Brooklyn a hundred percent got the niggas. <laughs> Harlem too, but I heard I Harlem going. is a gentrified hell cesspool now. Mm. I didn't say it, I just heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard that and I relayed the message. That's but right. Brooklyn. Every I hear nothing but good things when it comes to quality of good stock. I definitely enjoyed my year and a half in Brooklyn in that way. Like I, I didn't have any complaints. I liked the black people in New York. It was good. <laughs> and I say that my my ex is from Brooklyn. So god Ooh, damn. I'm sorry. Fuck you, Brooklyn. Ooh. Burn Brooklyn to the yeah. ground. <laughs> now yeah. What's the scene like in LA though? Um, the scene in LA, I would say, I mean, there's definitely a good amount of black people. Like, I mean, I definitely more than if you're in like a San Francisco or something like that. But so I I mean, there's a decent amount. I wouldn't say that the scene is as black in culture in that way. It just really depends, kind of. Like, there's a lot. I mean, you have your native LA trade, you have your transplant you know want to be reality star type of people you got all your different types of people in la and i native, huh native trade so that's giving me like compton south central looking nigga. is that what native trade looks like or i'm just being stereotypical um there's compton there's inglewood there's just south la yeah i would say so and so yeah, there's definitely, you know, a lot of them. There's, I mean, and there's also always people visiting here. So when you go out to the um, black gay clubs and stuff here, like you're always gonna be running into people from, you know, all across the country and stuff like that. So, I mean, I have a good time here. I don't, I don't really have complaints. I know that, yeah, I would say I don't really have complaints. Shout out to L the fuck LA. Yes, there's enough variety, there is. 
I, I, I love LA. I, it's a it's a nice city. I would like to move there one day, or at least yeah. have a home there. That's real. That's real. Yeah, no, I love it here. I love it because I need to be in somewhere with some heat. I I just need that. I can't do the cold except for like a season. Mm -hmm. I'll go yeah. to the cabin and then I'm gone. Yeah, I've been grateful to be in quarantine and know that no matter what month we get out of it, it's going to be nice temperatures here either way. So I'm going to be living nice with some nature either way. Like that is important because, you know, I I'm really praying for some of the colder states, especially with the pandemic, because it's it is, it, you know, it's a risk. It, I'm a little scared because Detroit, especially where my family is from, I'm like, so. Detail. Yes. And since you brought up quarantine, it is the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the journey. It's the, it's the journey. <laughs> it's the journey through the COVID. <laughs> How are you faring? Do you know anybody that caught the COVID carrying it uh, now? I I know some there's been a distant family member who I know that did get it in past. He was very, very old, um, but he did get it in past. Um, did any friends get it? Oh, a friend got it. A friend got it, but he's fine. He's fine. I knew and yeah, I, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, I just have definitely seen people on social media randomly getting it and but they seem to be living, so they're fine, I guess. Hey, they're living, so except Herman Cain, he died. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So it has been kind of rough, you know. I'm really trying to stay safe, so I've been chilling in. I haven't traveled. My mom is actually getting uh, married in a couple weeks, and I had bought a ticket, but I was just like, and it's not like a formal or. It's not a traditional like wedding and a thing. It's more so just out in nature, and there will probably be some seats for some of the older people, but it's gonna be very much so a very very small thing. But I just was like, we mouth dropped like, and like oh, as in like oh wow, congratulations. Oh, I see. oh yeah, yeah. But that in general, I was like, I I just didn't feel comfortable getting on a flight and then staying with family. I'm like, I don't feel like it would have been the best for any of our stress levels, like. Well, let me tell you, my cousin just died last week and we have to we're having something at the end of August. And I don't like we acting like that's going to be the end of COVID. COVID still going to be running amok. So I don't know. It's going to be socially distanced and shit. But dang, well, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. thank you. Thank oh. you. But hey, what can I say? <laughs> oh. So at the end of the show. I want to give you the opportunity to tell everybody where to follow you. And I'm going to take my ass off the screen. Tell them what you're working on. Wait, fuck that. Pause. I got to ask you a question. Do you feel like there are secrets to success? And if you do, what kind of advice or tidbit could you give to the people? That's what I want to know. Um, depending on the type of business that you have, I do feel that there are some secrets to success that will can help people out. I think that especially with this industry, I think that utilizing social media in ways that ne not necessarily everybody does is important. Like I think it's not just about, you know, hoping to bring followers in and stuff like that. It's also about reaching out and being humble enough to be like, you know, I have to understand that people aren't just going to come out of nowhere and you know you do have to be a real human being and like reach out to people and follow people you know don't ah. try to have some ratio where you follow 120 and you're tr trying to get to you know uh, 40,000 or something like that because by, by doing that you are decreasing your visibility and just decreasing in general your market and you can max the more than you maximize your market through your actions and through networking and using social media like that has definitely helped me because I haven't just sat around at all the times and waited for you know opportunities to come to me I definitely have been proactive in trying to find creative ways to create opportunities which has been important for me, like, especially when it comes to ownership and not, you know, waiting for, cause when I decided that I wanted to 
be in this industry. You know, I didn't want to just wait and be like, okay, you know, hopefully I get some role or whatever. I was like, no, I'm just going to start doing things I am passionate about now. So I think that's another important thing. Like you don't have to, the first episode, the first two episodes of Black Sex in the City were off my iPhone. And it's just important to know that you can create, you know, with whatever you've got. It doesn't take a huge budget to do everything. Like you can start small and it is about being consistent in everything that you're doing also. So just the mix of all those things, because, you know, when you just wake up every day and you're focused on that end goal of where you want to be, you just slowly but surely end up getting there. Cause that's how it's been these last couple of years. I didn't know how I was gonna, you know, get to do the things that I wanted to do and stuff like that. I just, every day have been like winging it. Like, let me just figure out. And so that has been, those are some of the secrets I would say um, that have just kind of helped me. I, mean, I, I, I love those secrets and I'll take some of those for myself because you spoke real shit. And you spoke about the, because uh, you know what? You spoke about the, the followers and worrying about the ratio and having to do all that. And just to make sure you don't look like you're clout chasing or just, you know, you know, that's, that's a thing. If your followers should be greater than the following that you're following. Right. And that comes into, especially sex sales, period, in mm -hmm. all markets, straight trans gay boom is gonna sell but in gay gay <laughs> <laughs> gay in the gay community it hits a little different and That's true some of the like some of the predictions yeah there's there's definitely some things that do you know kind of toe the line between I won't name any. Things, I won't either. But yeah, there's is some of the 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 shows out series out borderline pornographic. Mm -hmm. I have no, no problem with porn. <laughs> no. <I> like porn. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be in everything we do. Like gay, it seems like that's the easy scapegoat to turn to when you're yeah. creating content now don't stop with the porn hear me still clearly. make that i want it still make that need that <laughs> but i feel like they only support people they're attracted to even i've been guilty of this i see some shit that's really inf not now i've gotten better i'm good growing each day but you'll see somebody you're attracted to be like, oh, I don't, this person's fucked up attitude, but damn, you fine. I'm going to follow you and I support this shit. Right. Like you can stay. You can stay on my page. I'll stay following you. Fuck it. But after, because <laughs> I'd like to see what you've been opposed. <laughs> I really hate the person you are. I, I don't I just hate your personality, but yeah, I've been guilty of that. And that's what a lot happens when supporting in the gay community, especially when you're supporting creating music. People already give musicians a hard time for shit, but yeah, a hundred percent. I don't know. I don't have a remedy for this. Most times when I have a statement to say about gay sex sales or any topic, there would be some kind of thought process. I mean, I can tell people like support people other than the ones that you're attracted to, but when horniness and shit come along. Ugh, it's just with, what they follow. Especially men are known for thinking with their head beneath the waist. <laughs> the beneath head. the waist. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I guess the best message is to just let all attractive people I like guess people out there know that they need to focus on also just being not nasty spirits because like you're saying, there's people on social media who will be attractive, but then it's like, all right, so are you a bigot? Like, are you, it's like you, you know, the views will be very off at times or, you know, whether it's colorist or whatever else. So I guess it starts with the people who people want to support who, you know, it's because they're attractive, but then they aren't really, you know, 
leading with no right. mentally. So it's like people need to make sure that they are doing the work to think and be cognizant about what energy and thoughts they're putting out there. That's part of what it is. Well, you get off a cool ass energy, a cool vibe. That's why I asked you on this motherfucker, because I knew you would keep it real, especially when I watch Flip Flop. I say, oh, this motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. Deny <laughs> I vibe with that. I'm crazy too. So I was like, yo, I could I could talk to this motherfucker. I fuck with him. Yeah. Because that's just it's that about crazy resonates with you. That's what life is about, friends and everything. It's like who's crazy can you really resonate with and enjoy? <laughs> yeah, and I I, I I damn sure resonated with that. And I resonate with your vibe now. Cause it was killing me. I'm telling you, it's that's why I was like, it was so much to unpack because I watched that shit numerous times now. And I'm like, <laughs> I really have you like it. I, I'm really, I'll be over here really laughing at that shit. And I don't do that to hardly any web series from our community, no shade, because I got friends that do that. There's some that are funny, but that was like straight comedy. I appreciate it. I really do try to just have that comedy real, real strong. And I'm excited because I've been writing more scripts and everything for moving forward in the pandemic. And I just, I enjoy it. I don't know. The ideas just come randomly out of nowhere. Like I, I enjoy it. Well, keep being bold in that shit and keep following that shit that comes to you because it's gold. I see Filet Films, The Empire. Thank you. Now, if your shit froze, can you? Okay. Now I'm going to give you the screen. I, I see okay. you. You moving. I'm going to give you the screen to say where you want okay, to cool. follow you. Boom, da, boom, da, boom, boom. It's all you. Okay. So you can follow me on Twitter at Filet Films. Filet spelled like that. Then Films on Instagram at Filet. Um, you can also follow at Flip Flop TV Show on Twitter and Instagram. And um, yeah, I guess those are the main ones. And just filletfilms.com has everything that I do, all the projects. And yeah, you can just stay in touch through there. I don't know why. That, uh, see, look, look how clear you are. Boom. See, that's what, he, that's what it's supposed to look like. So I just wanted to. <laughs> I don't know. I see. But, that's technology for you. But I want to do say filetfilms.com. You do highlight a lot of other artists and other people that's doing shit in the community. That's what's dope. That's that was the main reason why I wanted to bring you on here because you you're you still highlight other people. You're not being a narcissist. <laughs> you you yeah. you're doing good work yeah, out no. in these streets. Yeah, the more love spread, just the better for the community. Like, that's kind of what my priority is. That's why I like when people are laughing at the show and stuff like that. Because I'm like, okay, good. I'm spreading some enjoyment, some good vibes. That's what I'm all about. So you don't know how much I tried to cut that clip down. I was like, well, let me just use this part. I'm like, nah, because you need this part. <laughs> let me cut this. I'm like, fuck. I'm just going to put it. <laughs> fuck it. I just need the whole thing because that shit, you don't, I, I hope you don't think I'm lying to you. I really was over here dying laughing at this shit. I'm glad. <laughs> he needs some milk. I'm glad because after you watch your comedy that you've made for so long, like it can be hard to, like it can be hard to know or remember yeah. which parts after you watched it yourself so many times because it's your own it's like oh i wonder what parts people like or i wonder like you know how people are vibing with this <laughs> i'm gonna tell you one so, other um, thing about that if that was a thing when i if i was in school this is pre-internet like we got it now porn accessible as it quick if that was a show i saw that would have been one of the first things i beat my dick to oh <laughs> <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that is the end of our show. Y'all better go watch <laughs> TV. And I didn't play the intro to this bitch, my intro before I came on, because I was just 
in a rush. It can be the outro. Play the outro. Don't you go nowhere because we ain't done with you. So let me play this shit. Play the profile of this team. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Am I froze too? Hello. Can you see me? Yes. <laughs> I done ended it. And we live. I thought I ended the damn shit. <laughs> <laughs> we still live. Well, hey, you know, I said shout out to the producer because that beat has made the rounds. I love it. I love it. That was and a I, great I, intro, intro. Yes. And, and I'm sorry I didn't play it in the beforehand because you know why? I was over here just like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I need to be. I need to buy me some more. You out there where it's legal. I'm over here where it's illegal. True. Some of this dispensary weed don't be as good, though. Hey, now I'm jealous. I need to go get some. What's today, Friday? I'm going to have my friends roll us up some. <laughs> I'm going to hit up the shroom, man, right now. Now, if y'all ain't yeah. never tried some hallucinogenics, I they need to get that. About one time, and I didn't eat enough to hallucinate just to feel, like, kind of good. Cause I was nervous. I didn't want to have a panic attack and die. <laughs> I'm so You're not gonna have a panic attack and die. I almost did the first time I smoked weed. I mean, now I smoke like every day, but it was rough. I have a, I have a hard transition into into things into like that. I eat Something right like, into it. My anxiety would just be like, oh, this is new. I don't know what this is. But after, I'm like, okay, this is good. You need to try mushrooms. And my things with shrooms was this. The only I, I Google and research ask people before I try anything. I ain't tried no meth. I ain't tried no shit like that. Hair on. Mm. Uh uh. Uh uh. Now, younger years, I did try cocaine. Fuck it. <laughs> 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 Fuck it. <laughs> but weed is my go to. I, I like a good, hold on. Horni, hornitos. This is tequila. Mm. and shrooms a hallucinogenic they should give that to kids you know in denver not de somewhere in denver they that shit is decriminalized long story oh. short i did the research on this shit and like what are the side effects what could go wrong with me eating shrooms and there's like the only thing that most people have a problem with is it gives you like upset stomach or nausea and i was like see no i ain't finna fuck with no stomach issues that's the, that's what yeah, i ain't fucking I got sensitive stomach as me too. but if you put it Make it into a tea, grind it up, put it in the water, brew it. You get a stronger endorphins out of that bitch, and no, oh. no side effect. I see, I see. You'll know to give it a try. Life. I'm gonna give it a try eventually because I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. That's it a, seems I'm like vibes. Janae was doing it. I don't know if she still is, but. I hope so in this time. And <laughs> with the election coming up, y'all vote. This I, I'm gonna get on that. But we ain't gonna talk about that today. I'm a little right. right. so, oh, so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all so much for watching and thank you so much, Philip, for doing this with me. Thank you, you for having me. I'm finna end this, and you motherfuckers, please follow Sweet the Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, or whatever one you're not watching it on. Yes. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all of those. Sweet dot the podcast, no spaces, one word, and sweet dot is a period. Mm. Shout and, out to Sweet the Podcast. And shout out to Flip Flop TV because I promise you I will watch that again tonight because I need that good laugh. And we out of this bitch.